this would be okay. And I do not disturb them. Okay. Uh, so the goal of this chapter is just to learn about how to, um, you know, the workflow through use this for writing vignettes. Let's so start the other thing. Um, and understand uh, some of the code considerations that you have to have. So what is a vignette? I'm sure we've all used them. So, um, but it goes through just a, it's a long form guide to your package. Um, for example, a workflow for a target problem that your package is designed to solve, kind of going start to finish for one particular use case of your package. Uh, so there are several different ways of finding vignettes. I did not know that there were, you can just look in the viewer for them with browse vignettes. To find all vignettes, not super useful if you've got a lot of packages installed. <laughs> browse vignettes and give it the argument of a package and you'll find all vignettes for that package. And you can also open in the viewer um, a particular um, vignette if you know it by name. <laughs> um, not the way I assume most people access vignettes. They're also on CRAN, which is, you know, how I look at them for things that don't have package downsides. And then of course, um, there are vignettes on a package website. So um, one distinction that I always forget which direction it goes, but vignettes ship with the package and articles do not. Um, articles otherwise look pretty darn similar, but um, they're freed from the CRAN-based restrictions by only existing on a website. Um, so uh, yeah, package on sites hosts both of them together and you don't notice the distinction between a particular vignette or an article. They're all called articles on a package on website. Um, so I liked, well, yeah, I, when you get to a lot of articles, it's nice to have the organization of um, the package on website versus CRAN, which I think just alphabetizes them when it's displaying them. So it's nice to just see like, oh, these are the first things that you probably need. And if you've got more edge cases, they, you know, you first time you're using this website, um, using this package, you probably don't need to know about how to use it in package. Or you don't necessarily need to know window function. So it's nice that it kind of helps you take you through what the um, an organization and what the beginner ones are versus more advanced ones. Um, and so where this is defined is actually, I mean, this will be covered in a later chapter, but I was curious, or at least I think it will, <laughs> is in the package down YAML file. So um, there's a section called articles. Do, do, do. Yeah. So um, yeah, that has a YAML specific for package down that helps organize things. So if you give the nav bar, um, yeah, the nav bar will get the name for the grouping section if you give it a name and um, it will just use the, it will actually, it's, what did you do exactly? If you don't give it anything, you just give it the tilde. Um, it just doesn't have a title for it, I think, right? So yeah, all these didn't have a title. Um, yeah. So just helpful to see where it's going and how to keep things organized. And I'm looking around way too much. Okay. So um, yeah, so this is the the YAML and dplyr for how it's organized. Um, and yeah, so since this one doesn't, it doesn't even show up on the nav bar, right? We, this is the one where it said more um, articles, more functions, um, oh, sorry, more vignettes, more articles. It was these, since they don't have it, it doesn't show up on the nav bar, it just shows up on that page of vignettes. Um, one thing I was poking around and thought was interesting is that like Arlang actually has no vignettes. I assume this has something to do with, um, no good, it's not with the, because it's not tidyverse, sorry. Um, Arling has no vignettes, but it has several articles. So I assume that has to do with, um, uh, you know, managing what needs to happen during the install of a vignette from your package. So um, the workflow for writing a vignette, use this has a very helpful and very nicely named function called use vignette. Um, you just give it the name of your, the vignette as the file will be named and the name of the vignette as um, like the title on the actual vignette will be called. And if you don't give this, it defaults to the same name as the RMD. Um, so it does a few things um, 
on the first call of it, it does all of these things. And on subsequent calls, it only just creates the relevant uh, files. So it creates a direct directory and it adds knitter and um, our markdown in your description file. Um, it creates a draft vignette that has a YAML header for you and um, two code chunks. And then it adds some things to a git ignore file. It creates this vignettes git ignore and it adds patterns to them. Um, so when you're previewing your vignettes interactively, there'll be these um, uh, functions that, uh, sorry, side effect files that you won't want to um, keep. So it will add them to your git ignore so you don't have these R and HTML files. Um, then, so the uh, workflow for developing a vignette, like you start typing and you write the code for walking through your example, um, whatever you're trying to demonstrate for people. So kind of the key is you're working on your package and um, this is where um, you have to take some care to make sure that you're writing, you're testing your vignette with your appropriate version of your um, function code and your source code. So you do that with, you can do that with uh, load all so that your, um, you know, current sort source version of your package is, is being accessed when you're uh, using the functions interactively as you're writing your vignette. But then you need to render the entire vignette. And since it's, you know, in its own environment, um, if you don't do anything, um, it will be using your currently installed version of your package, which is probably some versions behind, unless the last th thing you're doing is writing your vignette and you haven't modified anything. But um, probably there are some things that have been modified from your code in the time that you're writing the vignette versus when your last installed version of your package is. So you need to make sure that you have your current source installed for your package. They gave more examples of um, how to do this, but I kind of liked the idea of using one of the DevTools examples. I think I will like this one, which this one, if you call DevTools build RMD on your RMD, um, it will just temporarily install your source version of your package. And so that seemed pretty handy to me, um, but the main key is just to make sure that you're um, rendering your RMD against the source version of your package and keep going until you're happy with it. Um, so the, as I mentioned, ooh, that's not spelled right. Um, as I mentioned, the template has a few things. It has a, um, starts with a YAML header. Um, it's probably seen YAML in various places. Um, it has, you give it a title and this title and this title should be the same thing. This will be the same thing on your first call to use this use vignette when it makes you makes a template for you. But if you change your mind about how you want to call it, you need to manually make sure you change this. There's no um, no other way that this will uh, stay up to date. That's the only thing that you should change. Um, HTML vignette is a special kind of R Markdown output document. So it's basically HTML document, but it sets um, some preferences for image size and things so that I, the a average size is maybe a 10th or so of the file. I mean, that's obviously average over a lot of things, but in the documentation for it, they say it's about um, uh, one tenth of the size of um, yeah. That's Sorry, Anha, what'd you say? I missed that. Sorry, it was on purpose. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, good. Yeah, so um, about a tenth of size of HTML document. Um, yeah, mostly changing the resolution of your images, but it does some other things too. Um, and yeah, look at all the documentation for that, but basically it's just the one you should use. And um, so the vignette engine is um, 
mid hour markdown. I did go on the Porto repo to see if there was a version of this um, um, for Quarto. And they're, they are working on or have finished a Quarto vignette version. So you can make it in Quarto, but not for submitting to CRAN because um, that would require CRAN to have Quarto. But if for some reason you want to make a vignette for your website um, that, or for a package that's not CRAN submitted, you can um, do it with Quarto. So are there, a couple, there are two other fields that are optional and that the um, the R package authors don't tend to use. So there's an author field that you can add. Um, they don't use it in general. Uh, the exception is if someone who's not otherwise a package contributor writes a vignette, um, then they will add that field so that you can see that this particular vignette was written by someone and they get credit for it. Um, and the other field that they don't use and they really don't recommend you use is a date field. Um, because either you're responsible, you know, it, it's not clear what it should mean. Either you write it all the time, every time you modify your, um, source field by hand or something, if that's what you want it to mean, if the last time the vignette was, um, yeah, modified, which is easy to forget to do. Um, or if you use sysdate, then it really has a meaning that's not particularly interpret or useful is because it um, it'll just say when the package bundle was created. I kind of like knowing when things were created initially, but uh, yeah. So uh, um, that did not render. So there, they, then they have two chunks after the YAML. So one chunk is um, just the knitter option set. And that the thing they do is they set how your comments are formatted, which I didn't know you could do. And then the other thing is they library your package. And um, this is where they say people sometimes put a hacky solution to make sure that the when you're rendering your vignette as you're working through it interactively, you're, uh, or you're working through it iteratively in the dev process um, that you might do something other than library in here. And they say, don't, don't do that. Just stick with library, your package to attach it and use other methods for making sure that your, the source is the source of your package is the one that's installed. Um, so then they have some advice on writing vignettes. Uh, so they say to try to adopt a beginner's mind, which they say can be really hard. They recommend teaching people about your package um, as a way to try to get in that mindset. Um, and then to also write about your package. And they try to write a lot of blog posts as they release things um, as a way to get feedback and identify, um, you know, identify things. And those can be two helpful ways of trying to get back into what would a what would a user approaching this for the first time need to know? Um, they also link to a couple of resources on some blogs for how to write technically. Um, okay, so then one thing you might want to do is to link vignettes from one vignette to another within your pile of documentation. Um, and there's no way to really do that within um, just just the uh, vignette itself, uh, vignette like package with your package. But this is like a great argument for using package down to make your website um, because you really generally don't have to do anything to hyperlink. So um, if you just write some function in your R markdown prose that you're typing, then and if some function is part of one of the fun exported functions of your package, then this will become a link to that function uh, without you doing anything else. And uh, you can link to another vignette uh, with just this uh, function vignette. Um, so 
The next thing is when you're writing your vignette, you might have some files that you need um, to, to reference at some point. So if you create the file within your R markdown, then you don't have to do anything special. That file will be the you know, plot or whatever will be available to you to use in the R markdown, just like any other R markdown. Um, but there are two examples they give where you might want to have a CSV or something that you um, need to reference um, that you are not creating within the vignette. And um, in one scenario, it might be used elsewhere in the package. And in one scenario, it would not be. So if it's going to be used elsewhere in the package, you want people to have access to it. Um, you want your users to have access it, to it, then put it in the inst file, inst folder, for example, inst external data. Um, and that's, they give an example of uh, a shape file in the SF package that is used in that way. Um, it's in the inst, inst folder, so uh, it gets called in the vignette like this, and also if a user wants to use it to um, play with or whatever, this ships with the package, right? Um, and if you've got an external file that you are just using for your vignette, uh, then just stick along the vignette source files within your vignette, vignette folder. Um, so how many vignettes should you have? One is often enough for simple packages. And this becomes the getting started. Um, so this is your primary like the dplyr vignette is uh, yeah, vignette slash dplyr. That becomes getting started on your package down site. Um, and that's often enough for some small, like um, simple packages, but probably want several more for complicated packages. Um, they should all be self-contained, explaining one chunk of something. They relate this to a book, a chapter in a book. So um, yeah, they describe something and it's a cohesive story about what your package scope is, but they're self-contained um, explorations and examples of, of how to use the package. So sometimes you might want to um, publish a vignette in a scientific journal. So if uh, you're kind of introducing something a bit more complex and you want your vignette published in a peer-reviewed journal for feedback, then they recommend either the Journal of Statistical Software or the R Journal. If, on the other hand, you primarily just want to get things out there so that other people have uh, something to cite and so that the people who wrote the package can get some authoring credit for the package, then they recommend the Journal of Open so Source Software, saying it has really fast uh, turnaround times. Um, OK, so uh, for these bits, I, I deleted less of the, all of the, of the content. Um, Sorry, I simplified less of the content because I feel like it's it's important to go through in more detail. So um, the R code in your package needs to be written differently from the code in your analysis and, and reports. So this is true for functions, tests, examples, and now it's also true for vignettes. So any package you use in a vignette must be a dependency. It has to be listed probably in suggests, maybe in imports. Um, so anything that Anything you use in your vignette is going to become a dependency of, of your package. So um, this is also a reason why you might prefer to write an article if this seems like too heavy of a burden to put on your um, on your users. So um, one thing you can do while you're making your vignette um, is you might not be able, it might not run on every platform. Um, so you might need to control whether or not a code chunk is evaluated. So they give a couple of different examples and suggestions of how to do it, uh, of how to, you might want to, the sort of things you might give to the eval uh, argument of the code chunk. Um, since this, can, this eval by default is true, but it can be false, but it doesn't just have to be false, right? It can be um, something that's executed. So um, for example, if, you uh, yeah, want to only evaluate the chunk if that package is installed, then you can do require namespace. Um, if it's a if you're using a a um, 
API or something and you need credentials for it, then you might um, uh, do file.exist. So for Google Sheets 4 vignettes, they rely on a lot of credentials. Um, and so they use a lot of this uh, Boolean, you know, feeding a function to the eval to decide whether or not that code chunk was evaluated. Um, so if the dependencies are too heavy or um, a requirement for your vignette, or you've got other reasons, you've got really beautiful, complicated, large things that aren't don't that you struggle to like get down into the size requirements for crayon for your I don't know, interactive or um, detailed graphs or something, then you can just not ship it with the package and instead create an article. Um, I do appreciate that the folks care a lot about accessibility, so they highlight that if it's only available on package down, then it is less accessible to people who are running your code without an internet connection. Sorry, who are running your package without an internet connection. Um, but if that's a trade-off that's fine with you, then use this as a use article instead of use vignette. And so this will add um, you know, to the build ignore and stuff so that the article is not shipped to the package. Okay, so um, this is where like the details of how the sausage is made is how vignettes are built and checked. Um, so vignettes in general, um, they say are kind of more like tests than like documentation. Um, and uh, yeah, that can make the vignette workflow feel rather constrained. So vignettes are, yeah, sorry, this is just straight from the book. Um, so vignettes are rendered a couple of times as your package is built. Um, all right, these details, I'm not, uh, yeah. So they're rendered during the R command build time or during DevTools build. HTML and RMD and .r are all placed in this inst doc folder. And you know, we went over earlier like how that becomes, how that moves up a level. So um, you can keep the uh, rendered vignettes in a source package, but they don't recommend this at all. Um, so one of the, um, yeah, they say like, when you're, when you're working with it, consider this disposable. Um, and th that's why I said earlier that the git ignore includes the dot HTML and dot R. So, um, yeah, you should, um, yeah, not keep the build versions around in your source package. So, um, yeah, uh, so, the, yeah. Rebecca, Rebecca, can, can, can you repeat their points as to why you should not be using built vignettes with the source? Um, Yeah, that's relevant. And I don't think I fully understood it. So uh, I, yeah, I just accepted it and then accepted the fact that they gave some examples of how, how to do so. But um, yeah, I, um, yeah, do you have a, sorry, does anyone else, I don't know off the top of my head why it was so important to um, not, to make sure that your HTML are, are ignored. Um, yeah, I didn't understand this either. Um, and I don't know, the only thing I can think of is that HTML is weird. Like I was trying to I was using Git earlier and Git also doesn't really like HTML because it's just big and it's hard to track changes. So I don't know if it has anything to do with that or if that's a totally different thing. Um, I do 
wish, I guess my, my general gripe is like, I wish that when um, packages were opinionated like this, that they would make it a little clearer. Like a message should pop up if you try to include an HTML that says like, hey, please don't do this. Um, Cause not everyone's gonna like read this far into the book and notice this. Um, but yeah, I wonder what would happen if you tried to include it, I don't know. So just looking at current contents of the slide, it looks like their argument is that, well, the way the way vignettes are built is that HTML file is initially placed in the vignettes folder along with RMD. And that's not the right place for it because they want this <coughs> to be in, in stock or wherever. So that's basically wrong placement. Um, so that's kind of, yeah, with the CRAN workflow that CRAN is gonna try to build the vignette and blah, 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 I can see that. Uh, in my experience with internal packages, when you are, well, you and your small team is the main consumer of this package, this is this is restricting. <laughs> uh, and moreover, well, HTML is getting ignored automatically. So, right, so when you send use vignette the first time, the Vignette HTML is needed to get ignored, and you have to make an effort to bring it back and whatnot. Uh, <laughs> um, but as a developer, I personally want to see updates up to that HTML file, and just to make sure that, well, this is the commit that updated the RMD, and I want to see that the HTML was rebuilt. So this is. It's up to date with the edits and RMD file. Um, that's my main thinking about that. Um, but I appreciate the point that it kind of breaks some of the workflows or creates multiple floating versions of the vignettes and um, the vignette that's built with DevTools, uh, build RMD or whatever. The, proposed process was is diff maybe different from vignette build with our CMT build. Um, so that's, that's, I think, is the source of their opinionated opinion about not building vignettes and committing them and putting this in the source file. Yeah, so I think we can we can we can we can, we can, we can escalate this to John. And see what. <laughs> Sorry. We can escalate this to John and see what yeah. his opinion is. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think I mean, um, I just sort of took this. I mean, since I don't have the same experience you do, I sort of just took this as a a fact to accept. Um, and I I guess I thought it was primarily around making sure that, um, I don't know, that you don't get out of sync with the source, but maybe that's, but I mean, they do, they do talk, they did link to, well, actually it's probably still in here since this was just. Um, right, I mean, if you- They link to the R open side, right? Bit. Yeah, so, so here they describe that this is, if, if it goes with GitHub Actions, uh, that publish the package down website, then that's kind of an an issue. <laughs> In our unfortunate workflow, it goes, well, we don't have GitHub, we have Bitbucket, and mm -hmm. we don't have GitHub Actions. We have uh, Jenkins that sometimes talk to Bitbucket and their Studio Connect that we use to publish the vignettes, and sometimes it doesn't. So it's just easier for us to manually build the vignettes. But yeah, ideally it should be GitHub action automated. Okay. So did you, um, is your workflow like similar to, I didn't read, I will admit that I didn't read through this. Um, yeah. So if they've got some problematic vignettes, they, they recommend 
Um, yeah, okay. Oh, so the, all right, this is actually kind of cool though, so that you can have vignettes that do require, that make use of private data that you don't want to, so it can't run um, on every build. You don't want to ship the data. Cool, all right, so. Yeah, and the same would probably apply to when you have APIs that you need to authorize to or not. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. All right. This is a distinct example for a bit, distinct example from an article wouldn't solve this. You would still want to be making a vignette, but you want a vignette that you just render yourself. All right. Um, cool. Thanks. So yeah, they talk. So in the um, uh, yeah, you different ways you can make the current vignettes available. Um, So they say they recommend in general that you um, don't try to rebuild the vignettes um, in advance, but as part of the dev tools process. Um, but if you have to, there is a way around it, as just discussed. Um, but this is like in their eyes really for edge cases where, because it can lead to um, getting source and output out of sync. So then the final thing covered is the um, check. So um, yeah, so uh, in DevTools we rely on DevTools check, which does the build step and um, then checks the package. So does a static analysis of vignette code, um, checks for whether or not all the packages are mentioned in description. And then the RMD code is extracted into an R file. Um, so uh, only the car code that needs to be run is extracted and then the vignettes are rebuilt from source, executing all the code again. I think that's it, yeah, that's where it ends, so. Yay, vignettes, mostly straightforward aside from if you have edge cases. Um, yeah, any other questions or thoughts or points? No, really good. Uh, I would just want to emphasize that they explain that it's really important to create the vintage as they help us to think our our the logic of our functions. They say that before you launch your package, you should create the vintage as you will find some mistake that you were, uh, you know, making just because you know the package Hey, hey, this is hard to explain. I should change it, you know, the function or, or split the function. Yeah, yeah. I've had that happen. It's a it's a great idea to try to explain it and, and actually put a vignette together um, because you're right, it does really reveal where you've gone wrong. Um, it's called grab, grab or deck programming. Exactly, yeah. I've always been a little surprised that vignettes aren't the default, um, like when you pull up the, the help file for mm -hmm. the, the entire manual for all the functions in a package. I've always been a little bit surprised that it's just in alphabetical order instead of having any sort of, um, you know, vignette as, as the default first approach to a package and websites are of course much better but yeah if you if you click on the reference manual well I feel like when I was just starting to learn R 
I would always go to the to the reference reference manual and I would expect it to help. And yeah. it didn't because it had no like explanation of how a function strung together whatsoever. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Vignettes and websites all the way. So Kaya, kind of unrelated question. Have you been on Twitter, formerly known as X? There used to be an account called Why Does R? So when you, that's a robot account. And when you add that account, it would throw a random uh, New York, New Yorker uh, cartoon with the, uh, with the caption for compatibility with S plus. <laughs> so, uh, and it's, it's, well, whatever the question is about oddities of R, it may, a lot of it may be tra traced back to 1990s when they thought, okay, well, this is, this has to work together with S. Um, and so this is the default documentation is LaTeX-ish .rd files and the default is this index or whatever. Um, that's the yeah, alphabetical listing of the functions. Um, but package down is just a modern way of looking at that. I mean, you can pull help file, but typically, but way better documentation is to the package down websites. It does just yeah, that that makes a lot of a lot of legacy there. Yeah, I get so sad when I'm working in areas where package down websites are not common. And yeah, I can't get very far with just a just a reference. All right. Um next time, what's up? Other markdown files. Cool. Yeah, thank you, Rebecca. Um, I signed up for next week, and it looks like I think Angel has the week after that. And then, if I'm not mistaken, we have like just four more chapters, um, and those do need volunteers to sign up. So, if uh, you see one that's interesting, please sign up. Uh, but otherwise, I'll see everyone next week. Thank you. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.